Hello, everybody. We're ready for another seven minutes on ITSP Magazine with a new short brand story. Uh, today, I'm joined by Brooke Mata. She's the CEO and co-founder of Rad Security, a company that aims to be the ultimate source of truth for cloud breaches by creating unique behavioral fingerprints that, uh, and detecting material changes in the environment. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us, Brooke. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, let's kick it off straight away. What, um, what are organizations facing today uh, in terms of challenges that you want to highlight and get them to maybe think about how to, how to address that problem differently? Yeah, sure. So um, cloud native development is one of the biggest threats facing security teams today. Over the past few years, we've seen lots of uh, folks implementing Kubernetes and um, containerized environments. Uh, and a lot of organizations are struggling to figure out what's happening with the infrastructure teams. There's a skills gap. Uh, in terms of understanding what's happening. And 90% of organizations with Kubernetes and containerized environments had a breach last year. And so we're starting to see more and more challenges like the XZ vulnerability emerging as a result of malicious attackers um, identifying attack paths into uh, containerized and cloud native environments. And what, what are the teams doing today that that maybe either distract them from uh, getting a handle on this, or is it is it the tooling? Is it the, uh, the processes? Kind of shed, shed a little more light on that for me. Yeah, sure. So one of the challenges is uh, waiting for signatures to be developed or waiting for a CVE to be created to help remediate these challenges. Um, another is uh, the lack of understanding when it comes to detecting and responding to um, infrastructure threats that are new and more complicated than what we've seen in the past. Uh, and so those are both two really new things that I think a lot of security teams are struggling to wrap their arms around. And when you mentioned in infrastructure, can you, can you give us a scenario, an example of, of something there? Yeah, sure. I mean, the XZ vulnerability is actually a really good one. Um, uh, it's a really good example of a threat that's emerged very recently. Um, and, you know, what you're doing a lot of times is waiting for a CVE to be created in order to remediate um, that sort of vulnerability. But what Rad's doing differently, if you don't mind me getting into that, is uh, we are shifting to identifying anomalous behavior as a way to sort of identify threats sooner. Um, and the way that we're doing it is through fingerprinting to detect what known good behavior is in order to identify uh, drift from that known good behavior. Um, and that allows for infrastructure teams to be able to shift left and identify those threats like XC before they happen and also before a signature is created or a CV is created. So how does this fit into an existing CI CD pipeline or a build process uh, so teams can actually take advantage of it? Yeah, sure. So we have one customer, which is an insurance company that actually has it as a requirement that um, RAD be implemented in all environments before Kubernetes ever gets deployed. So that's one way that um, organizations are creating internal policy to make sure that um, they are secure. Um, another is to make sure that um, you're notified when drift does happen um, and drift from known good behavior. And so if we can get to the threat early, uh, we feel that we're putting security teams and our customers do too um, in a much better position. And I want to go, go back to the drift, um, which starts with in order to recognize drift, you have to know where the where the good starts. <laughs> so how how do you help customers yeah. get that first initial view? Yeah, so good question. We do that by fingerprinting each application and uh, and maintaining that fingerprint. Um, and as the application changes, we can modify that fingerprint, but we're maintaining a master fingerprint for all of those environments to help prevent vulnerabilities like the XC backdoor which could um, 
result in malicious code and then uh, stop those things ahead of time. And what's the, what's the outcome your, your customers are experiencing? Um, well, there's, better, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, you can go. Well, I was just wondering, is, is it a, uh, ability to innovate faster, the ability to release faster? Is it uh, less burnout on the team? I don't know any, any outcomes that you can share would be great. Yeah, sure. So, um, one of our customers, which is in financial services, uh, let us know that they redu reduced the time to development by 10% as a result of implementing RAD uh, just in the early days. And we anticipate that number to grow significantly because of the fact that now they can just trust that um, as Kubernetes is rolled out and as um, the infrastructure teams are implementing in a cloud native uh, environment that they can trust that um, the environment is secure with RAD as we identify um, any possible anomalous behavior in a way that also reduces um, noise. And so I think people are um, tired of getting a lot of noise uh, from cloud security solutions. And so we're trying to reduce, um, reduce that noise for our customers as well. Yeah, yeah. Good visibility, less noise, better actions. I love it. Exactly. And the actions part is important to point out because I think there's a lot of vendors out there that are talking about problems and not necessarily helping their customers with solutions. And so RAD is really mindful of that and making sure that with our response actions in our platform, uh, our customers can get to remediation pretty quickly. Very good. One second. How can they find you? Uh, we're at rad.security or find me on LinkedIn, Brooke Mata. Perfect. And we'll see you at RSA conference as well. Thank you, Brooke. And and thanks so much. That's been seven minutes on ITSP Magazine. Thank you, everybody.